Ladies and gentlemen, muscular imbalance leading to disharmony of muscle action around the hip joint is the cause of still most frequent region of pain in cerebral palsy, pain of dislocated hip joint. Yes, we know this on the basis of our own experience and on literature data. The number of publications addressing this clinical problem is still rising. The articles are about etiology, morphology, treatment, and consequences. So, our knowledge about spastic hip dislocation is really satisfactory. From the other hand, is it profound enough to turn the course of this disease around? If yes, why is the incidence so high in so many countries? There are thousands of children and adults suffering from spastic hip dislocation. What is that we are missing? Primary and secondary etiological factors have been worked out fairly clearly. The risk factors for hip dislocation are well defined, especially in light of the functional status expressed by the GMFCS. The level of evidence for proactive treatment proved highly in many articles. Consequently, early and identification and treatment are crucial in preventing spastic hip deterioration a true victory of science. However, the HIP surveillance program has a serious limitation, knowledge implementation. As such, the future reach research objective should be to promote the expansion of the surveillance model and to monitor the level of evidence based knowledge acquisition concerning the proactive treatment protocols. Such it's the mission of coming 32nd European Academy of Childhood Disability meeting, planning as online meeting at November 2020, and orthopedic pre-meeting events with live surgery transatlantic webinar followed by discussion. I'm honored to invite you all to participate in that. Thank you.